would not suffice were I to describe all the monsters that assailed me in my solitude, from whales rigged like ships to a shower of red insects which changed the water of my fountain into blood. But none were as disgusting as the harpies whose awful polluted the leaves of my sycamore. Harpies, observed Lactantius, are female monsters with birds' bodies. They have a woman's head and breast. Their forwardness, their shamelessness, and their obscenity proceed from their female nature, as the poet Virgil demonstrated in his Aeneid. They share the curse of Eve. Let us not speak of the curse of Eve, said the Lord. The second Eve has redeemed the first. Paul Orosius, the author of a universal history that Bossuet was to imitate in later years, arose and prayed to the Lord. Lord, hear my prayer and Anthony's. Do not make any more monsters like the centaurs, sirens, and fauns, whom the Greeks, those collectors of fables, loved. You will derive no satisfaction from them. Those species of monsters have pagan inclinations, and their double nature does not dispose them to purity of morals. The bland Lactantius replied in these terms, He who has just spoken is assuredly the best historian in paradise, for Herodotus, Thucydides, Polybius, Livy, Velius Patriculus, Cornelius Nepus, Suetonius, Methino, Diodorus Siculus, Dion Cassius, and, and, and Lampridius are deprived of the sight of God, and Tacitus suffers in hell the torments that are reserved for blasphemers. But Paul Orosius does not know heaven as well as he knows the earth, for he does not seem to bear in mind that the angels, who proceed from man and bird, are purity itself. We are wandering said the Eternal. What have we to do with all those centaurs, harpies, and angels? We have to deal with penguins. You have spoken to the point, Lord, said the chief of the fifty doctors, who during their mortal life had been confounded by the Virgin of Alexandria. And I dare express the opinion that in order to put an end to the scandal by which heaven is now stirred, old male's penguins should, as St. Catherine, who confounded us, has proposed, be given half of a human body with an eternal soul proportioned to that half. At this speech there arose in the assembly a great noise of private conversations and disputes of the doctors. The Greek fathers argued with the Latins concerning the substance, nature, and dimensions of the soul that should be given to the penguins. Confessors and pontiffs, exclaimed the Lord, do not imitate the conclaves and synods of the earth, and do not bring into the church triumphant those violences that trouble the church militant. For it is but too true that in all the councils held under the inspiration of my spirit, in Europe, in Asia, and in Africa, fathers have torn the beards and scratched the eyes of other fathers. Nevertheless, they were infallible, for I was with them. Order being restored, old Hermas arose and slowly uttered these words, I will praise you, Lord, for that you caused my mother, Sapphira, to be born amidst your people in the days when the dew of heaven refreshed the earth, which was in travail with its Savior. And will praise you, Lord, for having granted to me to see with my mortal eyes the apostles of your divine Son. And I will speak in this illustrious assembly, because you have willed that truth should proceed out of the mouths of the humble. And I will say, change these penguins to men. It is the only determination conformable to your justice and your mercy. Several doctors asked permission to speak. Others began to do so. No one listened, and all the confessors were tumultuously shaking their palms and their crowns. The Lord, by a gesture of his right hand, appeased the quarrels of his elect. Let us not deliberate any longer, said he. The opinion broached by gentle old Hermas is the only one conformable to my eternal designs. These birds will be changed into men. I foresee in this several disadvantages. Many of those men will commit sins they would not have committed as penguins. Truly, their fate through this change will be far less enviable than if they had been without this baptism and this incorporation into the family of Abraham. But my foreknowledge must not encroach upon their free will.
in order not to impair human liberty. I will be ignorant of what I know. I will thicken upon my eyes the veils I have pierced, and in my blind clear-sightedness I will let myself be surprised by what I have foreseen. And immediately calling the archangel Raphael, Go and find the holy male, said he to him. Inform him of his mistake, and tell him, armed with my name, to change these penguins into men. End of chapter 7